Good morning, and welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is Father Bert, and at this time I'd like to remind you please to turn off your cell phones. Our opening hymn is number 605, Praise to You, O Christ our Savior, number 605. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today's Mass intention is for Catherine Dumas, and the second collection is for the Church in Latin America. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at our right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For the Lord, first the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun in the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness. For there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, 
you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Saint Le letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? But Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, 
he withdrew to Gal Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. Casting a net into the sea, they were fishermen. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of De Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. He called them and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went all around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. If you have awakened in the middle of the night, especially in a strange place such as a hotel room, and needed to go to the bathroom, and there's no night light, you know it can be a stressful trip. You're hoping to locate a light slipping underneath the closed doors or street lights seeping through the window so that you have enough light either to make it to the bathroom or to find a light switch so that you can make it to the bathroom. So we struggle with darkness on a physical level in our personal world. There's also darkness on a greater scale when nations are enveloped in a war, war such as that experienced by the people in Ukraine. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah described that kind of darkness. The region of Zebulon and Naphtali in northern Israel were dominated by the Syrians at the time of the prophet wrote those words. This, of course, may be, have caused many Israelites of that time into spiritual darkness. Isaiah, however, had a prophecy of hope to share with his battered brothers and sisters. He predicted that God would shine a great light from this very land in which Gentiles then ruled, and it would be a cause of great rejoicing. Now hold that thought, because I'll be coming back to this. Today is the annual Word of God Sunday, which Pope Francis declared in 2019 as a new observance each year on the third Sunday of ordinary time. It was to stress the importance of how God has revealed himself through the written word and that we should embrace the scripture as part of our everyday prayer life. Today's gospel reading is a form of self-proof of that assertion. The gospel writer, Matthew, uses the Hebrew scripture to prove that Jesus is the promised light of the world. He used the scripture from Isaiah we heard in the first reading that said the people in the region of the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali beyond the Jordan River, which in Jesus' time was known as Galilee, would see a great light. It's where our Lord would begin his ministry. Just as Israel was destroyed from north to south, so in the Gospels we see Jesus restoring Israel from the north to the south. Matthew is saying that Jesus Christ is that great light. See, I told you I'd come back to where I started. And what's the light that shines through Jesus? It's the promise of salvation that he brought. When Jesus encountered the first apostles, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they couldn't ignore the light. They abandoned their fishing nets to become fishers of men. But why do we sometimes have a different response? It's through our fallen nature that we start to walk away from the light, even without realizing it. The temptations of the world may cause us to turn away from the light. As an example, let's look at the virtue of chastity. 
If we ensure our physical relationships are ordered to what our state in life demands, we remain in the light. When we succumb to evils, such as pornography, however, things darken. People become objects and not persons. This feeds into evils in which human trafficking, STDs, and abortion flourish. Money and power are also examples of temptations that can make us walk away from the light. We have only to look at stories that stream from the news about actors and celebrities who leave a trail of broken relationships because they don't know whom to trust anymore. They've forgotten about God, which leaves them miserable. The good news is that the light of the world is still here, even if we've turned away from it. It's perpetually here. It's not like a candle that will eventually die out when the wax wanes. There's no reason to think that if we find ourselves in spiritual darkness that we won't find our way back to the light. For years now, many dioceses during Lent capitalized on the image of light, inviting the faithful to confession in an initiative called The Light is On For You. We can always turn towards the light of Christ through the sacrament of reconciliation. Some may experience spiritual darkness when they lose a loved one. The funeral vigil liturgy gives mourners a reminder that there's hope by including the beautiful words of today's Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I've talked about two kinds of spiritual darkness. The first kind is when we feel distant from God because of events such as war or the death of a loved one. The key is never to lose hope in those situations. Keep in mind that God make, can make good happen from any event, even if it's not obvious. The second kind of spiritual darkness happens because of personal sin, but we can always get back to the light of Christ by repenting. To stay in the light, we're encouraged to read the Word of God. We live in an age where there are many aids, such as Bible studies available on the internet to help us. Also, if reading isn't our strength, we can listen to scripture readings through apps such as the Amen app and the Halo prayer apps. We also stay in the light by participating in Mass each week. Be joyful because our light and our salvation is present in the proclaimed word of God and in the Eucharist here at Mass. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord has promised to hear the prayers of the faithful in faith, we live our hearts and intentions to him. 
for the church in her mission to proclaim the kingdom of God in the world today. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide this holy work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from the pain of division or disunity, may God's peace prevail and renew a sense of oneness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God help us proclaim the gospel well with our words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed away from this life, may God soon welcome them into his kingdom, especially William Rehill, Sandra Tardiff, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Judy Cavalier, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Catherine Dumas, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we ask that you listen to our needs this day and answer in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 693, The Lord is My Light, number 693. The Lord is my light, my help, my salvation. Why should I fear? With God I fear no one. God protects me all my life with the Lord. What should I dread. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my help, the Lord is my salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord that I love.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit for our, our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. And by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death 
you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Catherine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace in unity, in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 661. Remember your love, number 661. We will also sing number 528, Christ in me arise. Please join me, number 528. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ in me arise. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. The parish baby shower is taking place for the month of January. See the bulletin for needed items. You're invited to join thousands of Catholics nationwide in prayer for the respect of human life during a special novena call, Nine Days for Life. Visit 9daysforlife.com to sign up to receive daily intentions from January 19th through the 27th. 
Volunteers are still needed in order to bring back the children's liturgy. Please see the bulletin for details. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. And our closing hymn is number 390, City of God, number 390. conquered the night. 